for coming, showing up. Um, the original show was at 830, so we had some luck uh, moving here. Um, we want to do a presentation because um, a lot of our uh, just um, about uh, enterprise clients went to use what and why. Um, you can put it there. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, first. <laughs> yeah. I'm still a timing issue. Bonnie Schiffer, uh, senior consultant. Um, he blogs, he's on Twitter. Most of you know him, I believe. Um, I'm Kees Babberman, uh, senior consultant as well. I'm blogging and I'm on Twitter as well. Um, the reason why I want to do this presentation is because I have a lot of customer uh, conversations and somehow they always end up in um, what to do with the client. Um, use the old client, use fat clients, use thin clients, and uh, there are a lot of choices to be made. So, um, when you look at thin clients, we've got different types of thin clients. We've got zero clients. We've got newest clients. We've got Windows clients. And on the Windows clients, we've got different choices. Um, <coughs> are we doing domain join or non-domain join? And what are we doing with antivirus? How should we manage them? Looking at fat clients, you've got Linux clients again, Windows clients, and a lot of choices again. So, um, all these things make it manageable or non-manageable. Um, and it will have effect on costs in either way, in licensing, in manageability, in scalability, whatever. Um, so we look at the domain joint machines. Um, there always is a bit of a discussion if you should um, add the, 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 um, the domain joint, the pin clients to the domain. Right. So if you do, um, they're a lot better to manage without extra tooling. But if you don't, well, uh, you need extra tooling for that as well. Okay. So when we were preparing this, uh, this session, we knew it was at 8.30 a.m. on Sunday morning. And as you know, Saturday evening was a bit, a bit hard to come. Um, so we would get your attention. So we created a, a nice analogy. So you, as you can see, we have the thin, thin client. Looking good, looking hot. Low cost, she doesn't eat, so <laughs> don't sp spend that much money. Uh, great performance now, low low maintenance, she's sporting, she doesn't eat, so easy, uh, not very really intelligent, so no, less options, so not a lot of maintenance for her. And then you have to fix fic her. <laughs> Looks okay. Higher costs. She eats. She nags. <laughs> she has issues. She marries you. <laughs> she has a great performance. <laughs> she eats. She has a lot of energy. Great performance. It's okay. Maintenance. What you make of it? I mean, if you go, if you go to her, with the CD, install Windows on her. <laughs> Press the off button. Uh, next, next, next. Day, it's a lot of work, but if you create nice images. Uh, you can do a lot with it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll come back to that. <laughs> We're getting serious, but I hope we, we have your attention now. It's 11 o'clock, so you're probably awake. So, next slide. Please can go. Um, a lot of these conversations go about um, a couple of myths in um, the fact of using clean clients. Um, what? <laughs> Sorry. Thin clients don't need updates. They do. Um, every now and then, Vendor comes up with a new image. Um, Citrix does a lot with the receiver and updates. Um, you want to put in the, the newest receiver in, into the image, so you have to update your image as well. Um, Thin clients are read only. Uh, most of them have a write field on it. Uh, so, <laughs> one of the myths is you don't need any virus for your thin clients but something you have to think about, because although it has a right filter on it, um, 
you still maybe need antivirus because, well, it's the first um, way to your uh, server backend. Um, the thing point is cheaper. Um, with the recent developments in, um, in hardware, it's not always uh, the fact that a thin coin in hardware is cheaper because, um, well, there's powerful uh, fat clients as well uh, which can act as a thin coin. Um, right on. So less power, um, less management, less maintenance, uh, less hardware faults. Are they true? Um, I think there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of discussion, um, especially for the power part. Uh, but we'll show you in a, in a couple of slides. Um, like I said, the thin client management is, is almost the same as a fat only. You need to update it, you need to manage it, you need to end the virus. Maybe you join the, the, the domain, you still need some maintenance. Um, less hardware faults, it's because people say there are um, not enough moving parts, or not, not so many moving parts in the thin client. Well, they have fat clients without moving parts as well, so. Um, that's me good. And you can blow a thin line. Oh, so, well, we'll well, you can to blow thin <laughs> We'll get back to that. Later. Um, what about fat line solutions? Um, you don't want to be fat line, that is, with Windows on it, um, users can still screw up the fat line. So there are a lot of uh, solutions to turn in the um, fat client into a, a, a managed thin, thin client, leveraging all the, the functionality of the fat client. Um, well, Andrew Morgan, everybody knows Andrew. He has a, a, a fine product, um, thin kiosk. If you haven't checked it out, do it. Have an IT VR blaster, uh, Microsoft thin PC. Citrix desktop appliance lock, just go on. Um, they all have a certain functionality you do want to use, um, but um, it's not optimal. And how many of you use the desktop appliance lock? Right. Yeah. There's a reason why Andy started Thinkios. Um, so. If you want to reuse your old clients, you have to think about how am I going to uh, deliver the right performance for my users, but keep it manageable. And I think th think deals is a is a good way to do it. Okay, next slide. So we got some vendors uh, to get some hardware and where because we also wanted to test some stuff, boot times, uh, power usage, because everyone is talking about power, power usage, but what is less and what, what's not less or what's more. So we got some hardware, uh, IBM, Wise, Igel, no one here from the vendors, but anyway, thanks. <laughs> you should have said that. Um, so these are the clients we tested. And just a quick question, who knows which one is the fat client? I'll just start and raise your hands. First one, second one, hands. Yeah. Okay, take a picture. Those guys, guys get beer except for. <laughs> <laughs> um, the second one is the is the fat client actually. So it's not that fat. It's even smaller than the real thin client because the left one is the zero client, and the zero client is a no client. In my opinion, it has no performance, and we have tested it. Video performance, ugly resolution, terrible. Um, it's fast, it boots in six seconds, no maintenance at all. Just enter a, a, a URL in your DSP options, and it starts. It knows where your environment is, but don't expect too much of it. It has no user performance. So, next slide. Uh, we did some tests, first, first boot times, uh, boot times um, um, to, the, to the point where you can actually log into uh, a Citrix session, everything that happens after that is, uh, is, is Citrix. Uh, what you can see is that the Y0 clients, really fast, six, six, seven seconds max. Uh, but the interesting thing is that the thin client actually was slower in the boot than the Lenovo thing, uh, fat client, 
and it had an unoptimized Windows installation, uh, 5400 RPM disk, so it can be much faster. Um, so that's really interesting because when think line is slower in boot, why use think line? Um, what we also did was run some tests uh, with a power meter attached just to see how many watts we were using. We wanted to, uh, to use a low gen, uh, Ingmar came by, but then we ran into that, that the launchers are Windows tools and you need to install it and on the zero client or the client that's hard. So we just did some manual tests, run, run some videos, run some scripts, uh, just manually. And what we saw is that the zero client is using not so much power, it's really constant power, 8, eight watts, but it, it can't do anything. Right. It isn't delivering the performance. No, it, it doesn't do redirection of uh, video files or anything like that, just, so it's just uh, showing pixels and so not a good user performance, it's low, mm -hmm. low watts, so it's okay, but really no performance. Uh, but the fun thing is, when we uh, were comparing the thin client to the fat client, it actually showed the, that they were using the same amount of power. And that's cool because um, uh, why they use a thin client if the fat client uses the same amount of power. Uh, I must say that the fat client we had was a, a one of the first Ivy Bridge uh, CPUs, so it's using uh, less power than the, than the Sandy Bridge, but I think it's cool. Uh, and I don't see any reasons why you should do why you should use a big line, except for maybe a couple of hundred euros. But I mean that gap is closed in well. You're forgetting to mention you blew one of the things. One of the oh yeah, that, that was cool. Don't ever put a wireless power adapter in, in an idle thing line. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good tip. Uh, it smoke. Oh yes. yeah, it smoked. <laughs> right. like, it was cloud computing. <laughs> it said poo. <laughs> and the so. office smelled like two hours. It's it's terrible. Did you send it back? Like smell? Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't a good smell. <laughs> so, back to the next slide. Back to the chicks. I mean, we like chicks. <laughs> We've got our inspiration on the walking on the street here. <laughs> Um, in a couple of year, years, things change. What's hot now might not be that hot in a couple of years. <laughs> Just look at it. <laughs> I mean, this, this is the difference in a couple of years. Looking at performance, on the left side, she looks nice. She knows she, she looks nice, so why should she change? <laughs> she doesn't adapt to new things. I once looked pretty, talked to them, not going to change, so she won't adapt to new situ situations, no new features. Hard. Maintenance. <coughs> In maintenance, things doesn't change. Only your users are going to complain about she's nagging about new features. They can't do as much as she as she used to do. And on the right side, she changed. Look at her now. Really powerful. Still looks the same. No. Looks better in this picture, but with a PC it will look the same. But all the new features are there, performance is good, so you have more time with your first investment. Then with the thing kiosk installed, then wow. yeah. of course it's with the kiosk installed, or are you a subscriber? <laughs> so you know what to do when you get home. <laughs> but, but Andrew is sitting closer, so you. <laughs> Looks, looks are getting outdated. Uh, if you go for another couple of years, they, they both look old. So let's get serious. So back to case. Conclusion. So the conclusion uh, we made was, yeah, the fat line. Um, reusing the fat line or um, using like the IBM Tiny is feature proof. You know, whenever um, a e vendor or a vendor brings out new features, it's always always based on the Windows OS. 
we're always a step ahead. So with um, the reuse of a fat blind or using a fat blind as a thin blind, you're future proof and also you're future proof. You know your investment is going to take uh, much more um, out of the, the money you spend. You can take it longer um, and, and make it up. There's less maintenance when you reuse your um, fat blind with a solution like thin keels. Just install it with thin PC, thin keels, and you have well almost no maintenance. Um, the thin blind, less maintenance. Yeah, it's <laughs> going all over the place. Um, <laughs> like, like, like we have uh, proven in the slide before, um, with the, the, the um, IBM Tiny, the power usage is almost the same as a, a regular thin client. So the power usage isn't, isn't a really strong argument anymore. Um, for the thin client, it's a relatively low investment, but you get a relatively low performance as well. <coughs> in the end. In the end. Um, Thin clients, ready to use, um, and it's coming with the system on the chip, which is Linux based. I, don't, I just discovered it, so I don't know if you already know it, knew it, but it was, it was new for me. Old news. <laughs> Two weeks. <laughs> um, and remember, if you're on Linux, just like I said, you're always a step behind. The Windows features are always delivered earlier. Um, you can extend the life cycle of your FET clients because well, you're using it as a thin client. So. Um, for a thin client, power uses should be a, 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 a one of the pluses. Um, but again, the FET clients is, is closing the gap. They're closing the gap. Um, yeah, for your FET clients, there's a relatively large investment because you have to buy the hardware. Um, and it's getting cheaper, but you still have to create an image um, and use whatever tool you want to uh, close it down, lock it down. Lock it to resolution. So you're, um, you have to build an image. That's what the the bullet should say. Um, the thin client isn't feature proof, not future proof, but there's a market for both. You know, if, if you need users, just simple access, uh, no performance, you can go with the um, thin clients as is. If you need anything more, go with the fat client, make it the thin PC or uh, thin PLS or desktop appliance lock, um, but choose your product wisely. Any questions? I'm just wondering how much did the IBM desktop price that? We actually don't know because this was the first. We actually had the first Ivy Bridge client in the Netherlands. It was a show model, um, but it's, I think the list price for the Sandy Bridge is like six hundred dollars. I think. But a, a good thing client with a with a proper uh, GPU is also four or five hundred dollars. Yeah, and so. you can send, extend your life cycle so. Um, there's a business case for for turning in, uh, turning these fat clients into thin clients. Any other questions? Well, I can imagine that old uh, old uh, fat clients will not be uh, ready for uh, for example like this or something. Old fat clients, old fat clients, because the CPUs will not be. No, not for not for HD full HD video, <laughs> but for. 720p. I mean, the P4 106 should be should be okay. I guess. For, from from my own testing, I found that the P4 was okay. And for right, as as you said, uh, if you go 1080p on, on YouTube, it is going to start to slow down. Yeah. And the receiver 3.1 doesn't add to to the um, equation any better because it has a multiple OS, so it may. Basically, it makes the CPU. So if you do use a slightly earlier version of your CPU, you can get any of so But with leveraging, leveraging <coughs> all spec clients, we don't mean 386 or anything before P4s. I mean, you've got to stop something. But Most clients are going to be like on PCs that have one, three years, four years? No, five. 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 Five.
<laughs> and then that ends his five years. Uh, would, I mean, do, you, do you have warranty all the way through that period? No. It depends. That's a big risk. It, it, could, it could be. You can buy extra warranty if you want, but nobody will. Most of the time. Mo most of the time they buy a few extra. Yeah. That's cheap. <laughs> Any other questions? Nothing. No way. Okay. Okay. Just. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.